on today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to draw and paint rain and raindrops on a window. So we're going to see a scene through a pane of glass. It's going to be kind of out of focus in the distance, but we're still going to see roughly the effects of a landscape, which you can see here. And I'm going to have a pane of glass, imagine a window, and I'm going to show the effect of raindrops on it. Now, admittedly, the scene that I'm going to be using doesn't really look like it's just rained, but it might be that the weather changes really quickly. But anyway, so we've got a kind of sunny environment here, but I'm going to put it behind a window that has had water splashed on it, at the very least anyway. So I'm using an iPad and I'm using the app Procreate. Usually I would give you a colour palette or hexadecimal codes that you can type in in this section. And I usually give the file free on my Patreon page. I usually have a link for that down in the description. However, because I'm going to be using an image as a background, then all the colours I'm going to need are pretty much in the painting that I've got in front of me. So it could be that you use a different image or a photograph or some other kind of background for your experimenting with this technique. The first thing we're going to do, however, with my image is I'm going to make it look like really it's out of focus. So we're going to focus all rain droplets and maybe some runs on our pane of glass. And the background is going to be further out uh, and the depth of field is not going to be such that we can actually see the background in clarity. So the first thing we're going to go is to my adjustments, go to my Gaussian blur and blur it to a point where it's still recognisable as a landscape, but it's definitely not clear and it's not going to be as, as sharp as the actual water droplets I'm going to add. So once we have that, we're still not going to do anything complicated with our layers. We're going to do all this on, or the start of this on this first layer. I'm going to go across to the smudge tool. And if you click on it again, you'll see there are different brush settings. So I'm going within the airbrushing. It's still not painting as such, I'm smudging, but I'm using an airbrush. And then within that, I'm going down to the hard brush. It's a really strong brush to be using, and it gives you really crisp edges, which are perfect for this. So what I'm going to be doing with it is I'm going to be running my brush up and down the image. Now you can choose the size. Now I wouldn't go too crazy. I wouldn't go too big. It's not necessarily going to look as realistic as you need it to when you go too large with it. I'm going to put mine at around the 4% and I'm going to start to move it up my scene and you can see I've allowed some little shakes and wobbles to appear and that is really important because what tends to happen when water drops down is that it doesn't go in a straight line the wind may change it the elements will change its direction so a water droplet will sort of be affected and buffeted around left and right it could be that there are already other droplets that it merges with and that dictates its journey along down the pane of glass so we've got one of our main images there and we're going to do another couple. So there we have another, turned it down to 3% and I'm now doing maybe a thinner one over here. Again, allowing it to wobble, not gonna be a straight line. Now you can do these effects fairly quickly. I've gone back up to 4% and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring it back up again. You don't have to be too precious at this stage. You can just keep bringing it down, move to one side, bring it down again, do the same in here. So we'll bring it down again, maybe extend some of that co color further down, drag some of it, bring it up, bring some of that darkness up into our scene, drag it, bring it up. Same, we might bring some of that dark color up into our scene, bring some of that light color back down. So literally, you're going down, you're going back up, you're going over the edges, allowing little bits to stick out. You can do that a few times. I think you could overdo it, but you can certainly do it a few times and it's going to create some interesting blends and sort of mixtures of those colours. Because basically what you really want is some of these colours that are in the background starting to feed up into some of the other areas. Now, obviously, as you get further up into this part of the water and the water droplets, you're going to have less of the colours that are down here affecting what you see up here. And likewise, in this section, for example, you're going to have less of what's up here and less of what's down here affecting this section. Now, it's not to say that it won't affect it at all. I'm going to show you some techniques and some things that you need to consider when you're trying to create this effect. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find a dark colour on my canvas and press and hold. Now it depends what colours you've got. I've got a really dark colour here, so it's perfect. And now I'm going to turn the size of the brush down. I'm on a soft airbrush. Now sometimes I use some of the ones down here, but I'm not going to be needing it to be very big at all. So I'm going to just stick with a soft brush up here. And you can see it's quite a fine brush. I can make it quite a lot bigger, so we've got quite a lot of flexibility anyway. I'm going to put it down to around the 6%. I'm just going to have the opacity 
at around 25%. And I'm just going to start lightly. Now this is the key, if I press on hard, it's going to be pretty much black. I don't really want to commit to that type of dark color to begin with. So I'm just lightly adding some blobs. Now they don't all have to be completely round. It could be that it's quite heavy and it starts to come down to a point. And that's the beginning of something that might turn into a run, for example, be swimming coming quite heavy and then it's starting to condense as a heavier part of that droplet. And you could do a few like that, perhaps. Equally, you could have some that are just very much like a circle. I'll add just a few more. I'm going to run them from this upper sky area and then bring them down into this lower section too. So you can see how the effect is going to change depending on whether I paint them up here or whether I add them down here. Now you'll notice that I'm, I'm changing the shapes of some of these quite a lot and sometimes they will end up with sharp corners. Now this is quite a lot different than the kind of droplet that you would see on a other kind of surface. Now the last tutorial I did where I did lots of droplets, they were pretty much rounded edges. Now water behaves quite differently on a really super flat surface like a window and also the, the addition of wind and forces being placed upon it. It means that it distorts it, it stretches it out and sometimes you will get corners and points and, and yeah, different shapes becomes a lot more angular. So that's going to be a smattering of shapes just to begin with. Now, I'm going to teach you the, the essence of, of how you actually decide where to put the different colors within here. Now, obviously it's going to, to some extent, reflect what we've got in the background. It's going to relate to it. But the question is, if we've got green in our background, where do we put the green on our water droplet? And is it going to be different if it's up here? compared to down there? And the answer, short answer is yes, it is going to be different, but I'm going to explain how it's different. Now, if I just really focus on one, we'll do a water droplet that I probably will erase, but it just is a starting point and it will show you some of the things you need to bear in mind. So on our water droplet, different areas of the sky are going to affect it differently. Now, in simple terms, one of the most important things that it does is it turns the background upside down. So if I was to completely recreate that background in that water droplet, it would be an upside down version of it. Now, it's not always necessary to get into that much detail. Sometimes you will see all the details, but you don't need to create every detail to create the effect. So I'm going to create the effect and that's more important than every detail. So I'm going to select a bright color. So we'll go for something like a light blue. It's not the white and it's not the darkest bit of that blue, but it is a lighter blue and would naturally exist in that part of the landscape. And if I turn the size of my brush up to about 10%, I'm going to start adding that light blue to the bottom of our droplet. Now equally, we've got some colors down here too. So I'm going to take one of the brightest colors, which is that green, and I'm going to start putting it at the opposite end of our droplet. But we also have dark colors, which if you notice, go either side of that light green. So probably need to add some of those in too. Now we also have trees. So maybe I can do some upside down trees, as you can see. Normally we'd have a light green and then trees that go above it. In this one, however, we're going to have a light green and then some trees that, that kind of point downwards. Underneath that green, we have a dark green again. So above this light green, we're going to have a dark green. And then at the bottom of our scene, we've got a reflection of the sky. So maybe at the bottom of our scene, if I turn the size of the brush down to around five, six percent, I can just add some of the color that you would see at the bottom down here onto that. So I'm just adding some of the light color there at the bottom, which might be some of the wispy clouds. So if I was to turn upside down and zoom in, you can almost see like a really simplified version of the landscape that we also had here. I've not done it particularly crystal clear and it's not as interesting as some of these other shapes will end up because they're more distorted. So I'm going to get rid of all of that droplet. That was just a test. However, I'm just going to explain one more element of this. And to do this, I'm going to change colors. So if I do a red blob, green blob, a yellow, and a blue, the way that it would appear reflected in our water droplet depends on the location here. Now, what would tend to happen is that that blue would be pushed and reflected over on its opposite side over there, something like that. And this isn't going to look very good as a water droplet because this is not really a natural kind of situation for it. But I'm just trying to explain the kind of logistics of it. A green color, because it's over this side, would diagonally be its opposite. The red would be over here and the yellow would appear 
over here. So that's the basis of it. You really, wherever it is, it's going to show up as an effect on its opposite side. So it's reversed everything. So not only is it showing the picture upside down, but it, it reverses the location of wherever it's drawing its sort of reflection from as well. Now, obviously I don't want any of those effects either, but I think really it's gonna give you a better understanding of how we're going to progress forward with what we are going to be using. So when we come to one of our water droplets here, for example, we'll go for one quite high up. Now, in terms of the colors that it has around it, it's going to be mainly blue and white. Now, we're not gonna add a lot of color other than the natural colors that are around it anyway. However, we do have some colors down here that really we need to feature in there to some extent. So again, like I was doing on that more rounded water droplet, I'm going to go up there and I'm gonna add some of that light green, but I'm only gonna keep it as a thin strip at the top. I'm gonna to go for my darker green. I'm gonna go back to it, add a dark green, and then maybe just some texture in there because really we do have trees. And if you remember, there was like a dark green there as well. And there's not a lot down here that we need to consider other than perhaps another light blue section that I can add here as well. Okay, so that really caters for everything that's down here. Obviously we have stuff that goes above there. It might be there are more clouds and white elements at the top. So we're gonna take some of that white and we're gonna add it to this part of our water droplet. We're gonna add the clouds. Now we haven't really done much with the mountains, so perhaps we need to get that dark blue. Go back in here, remember we're doing it upside down. So we just have a hint of that color to suggest something of the mountains. We really don't need to go too far with that. Now the overall effect on its own is probably not going to look that great, but it's when you see it in combination with other colors. Maybe I need to add a little bit more of that white underneath. Now, if we go and add some of those same effects to our next water droplet, say for one here, we're gonna do a much more simplified version even than that but it's still in essence gonna be the same. So the bottom of it is gonna have that white and the top part of our bubble is gonna reflect all the colors that are down here. So let's start with the mountain color this time. Gonna have some mountains in there and then really we need to try and show the green. So rather than doing all the different types of green like we did in that last one, we'll just get a sense of some of the green. And it's actually gonna appear quite dark at the top of this droplet. So that's the, the kind of effect that you might see at the top. Now, what happens if we switch down into a darker area? Because this obviously is gonna have the majority of its colors taken from what's immediately behind it. Having said that, we're gonna bring some of these colors in to affect that as well. So we have the sky and the light colors up there. So let's pick our light blue and we can start adding that into this section here because it is the opposite area. Maybe add some white as well. We can really push the extremes of that light colour. We'll do the same at the bottom half of all these water droplets. Remember, they don't have to be perfectly round, so I don't need to zoom in to worry about how neat it is. We also have some of these green colours. Now we need to represent those quite a lot more in this water droplet. It's a lot closer to there, so therefore the amount of green is going to be more than it was perhaps up there. We also have our dark greens. Remember above that light green, we have the trees reflected. So I'm keeping them rather a lot more prominent in there because it's immediately behind there too. In fact, let's make it an even bigger space for that dark green. And the dark green also went below that, didn't it? So in our example, it's gonna be above the light green. However, we also have the reflection at the bottom. So we need to get some of that light blue and just add a hint of it perhaps at the top. If it's not light enough, maybe we need to exaggerate with a little bit of white just to really get that point across. Now you don't want very much of that, you do need some. Now I feel like I need some more lighter colors to blend in the clouds and the center sky there at the top. That feels about right. If I want to turn the size of the brush down, I can do that and I can just creep some of that white around the edge a little bit. That seems to be quite a good thing to do. And if I want to exaggerate the dark at all, I can also do that really want to create a little bit of a contrast. If there's a contrast in our scene naturally, then feel free to exaggerate it a little bit in these water droplets. So like I say, on its own, it doesn't really quite look right. So what you probably need to do is vary the size. You can have lots and lots and lots of tiny droplets that perhaps work in combination with that. And each one of those is just gonna be a mini version of what we've just done there. So we can close shapes, We'll go back to our light colour, so we'll take one of the lightest colours there. Remember, just like we did the underneath of it, light, we're going to do exactly the same. 
Now we're not going to waste a lot of time on these tiny ones trying to add too much in detail. You're not going to see anything other really than a reversal of the light and dark that's in our scene. So the light is at the top in our scene so it goes at the bottom of our water droplet and the dark is at the bottom mainly, therefore it's going to be mainly on the top of the water droplets here. So flip between them, you can keep adding darker lights. You can really go to a tiny, tiny flex of water, perhaps. Again, keep switching between them. Just remember to put the light at the bottom, the dark at the top, and then it relates to what we've actually got in our background. Now we can fill our area full of bigger droplets and smaller droplets, which is what we're going to do. So I'll do a few more, perhaps I'll do another larger one. I'll do one here, in fact, that looks like quite a good one to have a go at doing. So again, we've got quite a lot of prominent green shapes in the background, but we also have the trees really prominently in that area too. So perhaps what we could do is we take that light blue and I'm just going to use it to create almost like the beginning, the lower half of that mountain, but I'm doing it in a different way. Rather than drawing the positive of the trees, I'm taking away and then we've got the spikes coming down, which is in some ways equating to what we've actually got above there. It is the trees. We've got some light blue down here as well, so I can add some of that. We've got more of this light green. Remember, the trees are dark, which is this section here, the spiky section, all pointing downwards. But then we have a light green section immediately near that. Maybe take some of that blue again and just exaggerate it's a little bit more there. We can also take some of this darker blue because we're seeing it in a bit more detail. We might get some of those mountain features just kind of being more visible. And that's not to say it, it's not a, a clean thing. So some of those dark colors might creep around the edges too. We can distort them in. It's a round shape. So instead of being a flat inversion of what we see above, it kind of stretches it at the edges. Maybe that's what we didn't do there enough. I think, yeah, I think that looks better if we start to distort it and stretch it in to that shape a little bit better. So we'll bring that darkness around, maybe the trees spiking on here too. I think that more, or rather it looks more like a real water droplet now compared to how it did a minute ago. But again, it's not about that singular water droplet. It is about the effect of all of them. So let's keep going. Let's do some more. Let's find another shape. Let's do that shape. So again, we can draw this section, which is the sky upside down. We've then got a dark, section for the tree, so let's press on that area. Got some pointy shapes, all pointing downwards. Maybe some layers, because we have the dark trees, but then we have another dark layer here as well before we have the water reflection. Then go to the water reflection, steal that blue, and add it up here. Now, if we feel like we need some more of that dark color again, we can take it, we can wrap it in a little more. There, and I feel like that's starting to work. If you feel you've got too much of one particular color in an area and you feel like you need more of that green, well, there's different things that you can do. You can go, for example, to our liquify tool and you can go to the push, turn the size of the brush down to however it seems more appropriate to the size of the water droplet. And then you can go back onto your canvas and you can push it to fill more of that area. I feel like I needed more green because actually we're really close to that green and that blue is a little bit further away. So that works a little bit better and I'm gonna do the same here. So I'm just gonna push there so that the blue now becomes a smaller element compared to the green, because it's immediately in front of that green area. Now the opposite is, is true of this one. So if we go back onto the liquify, we're on the push thing again. So maybe the green should be a smaller element here and the mountains should be a bigger element. So I can just push it the other way. Now the green has become smaller and the blue has taken up more space because again, it's immediately in front of that. So all these little tricks are really going to help you move closer to something that actually works and looks realistic for you. So let's pick another one. So again, we're going to choose this light green. Similar to this one, we're going to take influence from this one. So this time we're going to do less of that green. Turn the size of the brush up. We need it a bit larger than that, around 6%. Put some of that light green up there. Go to our darker colour. Turn the size of the brush down. Maybe some spiky trees. I'm, I'm taking influence from that, the way that it's really stretched out the height of the trees in that example. So I've partially used the tool to help, but now I'm, I'm using what the tool has done as my inspiration. Again, we've got a light color that we have for this bottom section because that reflects the colors that are in the upper part of our scene. Maybe start to feed it in around the edges, color over 
some of this dark colour, which is fine for the outline, but it doesn't really belong there now. And what is immediately behind our water droplet? Well, it's the mountain, so maybe they should be more of a feature. So if we perhaps just take away some of that, and then it looks like we're seeing mountains upside down, obviously. Now I'm still not happy with that. I think really what I need is some of that dark colour creeping in. It's distorting it around our shape. And maybe the lighter colour, I select a light colour, needs to reflect up because we also remember have some of this light colour from the water reflection. Maybe that should appear there at the top as well. Again, if you're not happy with it, go back to your liquify tool, maybe push the green even further out towards that edge, and maybe that looks better. Maybe I've done too much. Let's go back one. Better? Now, something that you can do once you've done a lot of these is go back to our areas where we have a run, because we need to add some of these elements and this thinking to this form as well. So for example, if we have an area here at the top that is really light, perhaps we need to, on any underside of our shape, add some lighter highlights as well. So I'll go back to my brush, make sure it's quite low, it's around the 2 or 3%, and we have a section here which acts pretty much like the bottom of our droplet. So if you've got a section that hangs down like that, you're going to treat it as if it's the bottom part of the droplet. So we can go for the underside of that shape and treat it again, treat it like it's the underside of a droplet. The underside there, it's not always going to be clear quite exactly what an underside is. Whenever it's clear, then try to go for it. Like that would be an underside there, for example. Almost one there, so we can add just a hint. That would be more of one. Now you can see it's not a smooth edge, it's quite nibbled along the edge, and that's very intentional. If you look at water droplets and runs of water, that's the kind of thing that you'll see. So we've got a really clear example of an underhang in this section. So we need to make sure that we're very clearly using some of the colours that are up there, including that blue on this section. We're not just doing it as a clear line, we're kind of distorting it and almost painting the landscape there as well. So we've almost got like the, if I turn it around you can see that, you've got the sky, we could add some mountains, so what colour do we need for the mountains? Maybe that blue, we we'll a thin strip in to represent the mountains. Again, you're not going to see these very clearly, but you need to represent the colours nevertheless. And then we've got a dark section already, which could represent the trees, and then what do we have next? Well we had a light green, didn't we? So let's grab that, let's put that in here maybe a couple of light green sections, and then we're doing quite a good job at kind of representing the image all within that section, that underside there. So again, it's a similar effect to what we've got here, but it's just represented on the side of that shape. Now you can pretty much do that kind of effect all the way down it. So we'll take that bluish colour, because that was really good feature. So we'll take that down, and maybe in areas where it, it starts to point upwards, that sort of disappears into nothing, but then it might reappear, on a section where you have a clear underside again. So you might just have it more prominent in some areas rather than across the whole thing. I'm going to go back to my really light colour, doesn't matter where you pick it from, and I'm just going to start using it here and there just to add little tweaks, little highlights, when I think that it's perhaps the opposite side of something quite light. So we have a lot of light in that. Yet to be honest, we have a lot of light in the whole upper section. But you could argue that you have light over here, so therefore, this side of there is going to be light. You could also argue there's a lot of light over here, so maybe we need light on both sides, and that's a perfectly valid way of approaching it. However, we might have a dark colour here, for example, in that tree, and it might be that it needs to be represented over the opposite side over here. Turn the size of the brush up, maybe extend it a little bit further, but we're going to get further and further away from the thing that's supposed to be creating that colour, so we'll let it just fade away. Now we've got some dark colours here, quite here, so maybe we need to bring some of those down into this section. Maybe it should be largely dark in this area, in fact. Maybe really some of the dark colours should only be, or the light colours rather, should only be near the actual edge of it, because if you looked at what's immediately behind it, well, we've got these greens, dark and light, so maybe they're the colours that need to be predominantly in this section. But we do have some light colours down here, so again we have another reason for adding just a hint of that light colour here, because it reflects what's down here. But not as much as we have at the top, so I'm only using this quite sparingly. Now one thing you'll notice with a streak of water like this, is that sometimes it seems to cling onto the glass. Now a good way of 
playing around with that effect is to go again to our liquify. We can go onto the pinch, check our brush size, maybe turn it to about 20%, find an area that perhaps you want to pinch in and you can even drag it out. You can take an area like that, pinch it, and it's almost like it's just starting to, or finding it difficult to let go of a certain section of the glass. You could again use the push and just exaggerate that with a push, but you just need to be careful not to overdo that. But it is something you will notice if you look at photographs of water, that it does seem to cling on in certain areas and it creates little sharp points. But don't overdo it, you don't want the whole thing to look spiky, it's just that in certain areas, here and there, then that's the effect you might actually see. So a little bit here and there it goes a long way, don't overdo it. If you do create a bit of a spike, well again you've created a different edge, so you might have an, an, an underside there that you can add lighter colours that are up here. Likewise we can add some darker colours, something like that. Again another one, so I'm going to take this light colour, add it to the underside of that pinched section, take a light colour from somewhere, add it to the underside of this pinched section and really it's a, it's a good colour to use in little blobs that stick out like that. Sometimes you just add a little bit of a, almost like a section there so it, without even having to pinch it if it's only a small area, you've created the effect basically just by adding a little bit of white there that almost gives the sense, the impression that it, it is jutting out there a little bit as well. Now if you've got a pinch, maybe it's come from somewhere, so there might be a little bit that used to belong to it, used to be attached to it, so maybe you should add something that's just become detached from it now. So it's almost like it's reluctantly let go of that little area there, but it has done. So I'm doing a lot of undersides of smaller droplets here, maybe one or two big ones too surrounding this shape because it wouldn't be in isolation. Again, if you get something that gets too big, maybe it then becomes too heavy, it starts to run down and then it joins with another one and then they collectively become two and, it, and then it goes on and on and on and it just ends up creating a streak that we see like that. So I'm going to add a few more of these now. So I'm switching between our dark and light colour, dark at the top where it's appropriate and light at the bottom where it's appropriate as well. So we're in quite a dark section here, so it's going to be mainly dark for our water droplets. So whatever the main colour of the background, your water droplet has to reflect that area. So if we're going to do them up in the sky area, we're going to have them mainly light blue. So if they're going to be in here, they're going to be mainly dark greens. So this one, for example, should be mainly dark green. This one a little bit less. And then as you go up here, we're going to have less and less of what we see down here. Let's switch back to our light colour. Then we can start adding it again to the underside of these shapes. So let's take this one for example. So we're going to have mainly white and, and blue as our background, but we're going to have some of that green coming in. So we'll start with the dark green and the spiky trees. So we'll have them here. Then we'll add our light green, then we'll add the dark again, something like that. Again, we can distort that round so we can bring some of those dark colours round around the edges. Equally, we can take the light colours around the edges. Sometimes you don't really need to add anything other than just something that's going to contrast with the background. So if you've got a dark area, you're not really going to need to add anything other than that. The indication of a, a reflection really, or the contrasting colour. So we've got dark colours here, there's no point adding a dark section to our bubble. We'll just add the, the white, or the light blue highlight. And that really helps speed up the process, as you can cover quite a lot of ground by adding some large amounts of fine blobs in these sections. So I'm varying up the size, I'm trying to do some of them really close together. Some larger, some absolutely tiny, I'm just really touching the screen, allowing in other areas to get a bit bigger. Some real variety. Maybe some areas you're gonna get more of a cluster and then in other areas become a bit sparser more spread out. So I'm going to do a real cluster around this section perhaps. I've already got rather a lot there so I'll just add a few more. Maybe take our dark colour because as we do come up here you are going to notice a dark section now whereas you didn't down there. So 
So maybe in this section, you just get a hint of an outline. I don't need, really need to add a lot to it. So we'll get some of the effects from down there, suggested just at the top edge. We're not gonna get a lot more than that perhaps. So just like we had down here, we had pretty much mainly the white color up here. Maybe we're gonna have predominantly just the dark color making it visible. This is obviously only for the smaller ones. In the kind of mid-tone colors, you are gonna to have to use both. So you'll use the light color and the dark color. Easy to go to town on these darker background areas. You can just really add a lot of that finer textures. It's kind of a lazy way to get a load of it done. Head for the darker sections. That's best, the best area to add some of these clusters. Sometimes if you're not happy with the overall effect, you can just turn the size of the brush up, pinch it in, and then you'll get a smaller version of it. So it becomes less of an issue really. Just make it big enough to pinch in the area that you want, and then you've made a much smaller version of it. Be aware that because we're using one layer, however, it will also affect the background. So if that's the case, perhaps you just need to go in with a soft smudge tool and just blend in the background so it's not as obvious. But I've reduced the size of an element that I felt wasn't quite working as well. Okay, I'm going to leave it here at this point. I think I'm pretty happy with the overall effect. I've explained some of the basic concepts and how you go about constructing an image like this. If you've had a go at following along with this tutorial and you're happy with your results, tag me on Instagram or join my Facebook group. The links for my Instagram and Facebook group are in the description. If you'd like to support me, there is a link down there for Patreon as well. Subscribe, press the bell notification button, and I'll catch you back here soon.